What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. I'm Katie and on today's video we are closing out my June 2023 budget. So let's go ahead and jump right into the numbers. So starting over here with my income. Um, my husband actually gets paid bi-weekly and we budgeted two paychecks for him. So for the first one we budgeted 5200. He actually brought in 5244. So that was $44 more than we budgeted for. So I'm always pretty happy when I am like right on the money for how much he will get. So I was pretty close on that one. For his second paycheck, we budgeted 5200 as well, but he brought in 5541. So I think he had a little um, a little extra hours and then he also got paid for some like continuing education that he did. So he got reimbursed for that. So that was $341 more than we were expecting. The next one here is my YouTube check. So I don't budget for a YouTube check because I never really know if I'm going to get one or not because I have a fairly small channel. So um, you have to meet a $100 threshold before they will give you a check for the next month. So this is actually my May YouTube income, but I received it in June. So I budgeted nothing, but I got $129. This was actually my biggest YouTube check so far. So that was pretty exciting. Thank you all so much because I wouldn't get a check at all if it weren't for you guys watching my videos and playing the ad. So I really do appreciate it and it means a lot to me. So thank you guys. I'm always gonna thank you every time I talk about a YouTube check because um, I know that if it weren't for you, then I would not get anything. So I do appreciate you. Um, next is a giveaway that I won from Deborah's Journey. So I will link Deborah's channel down below, but she is such a sweet person. She is actually paying off a bunch of student loans herself. So I find a lot of inspiration through watching her channel but I want a giveaway from her. So I didn't budget anything for this cause I you know, wasn't expecting to win. So um, that was $20 more than I was expecting. So that was pretty cool. So thank you, Deborah, if you're watching this. And then this last thing here is not actually income. So this was savings challenges that I completed. So in previous budget budgets, I took um, money out of the budget to use for savings challenges. And now that those challenges are finished, I'm just putting that money back into the budget. So this isn't technically income. It was money that we already had but I took it out of the budget before, so now it's going back in. So I didn't budget anything for that, but those savings challenges that I completed totaled $1,570. So we're putting that money back into the budget to go where it needs to go. So our total income that we budgeted for was $10,400. Our actual income was $10,504. So that was $2,104 more than we were expecting. But again, a good chunk of that overage was because of savings challenges. So it wasn't actually income. So I just wanna make that like clear. It wasn't like we just had all this extra money to work with this month. We did have some extra, but um, it wasn't quite this much. It was just from savings challenges. So. So the first thing we have here for savings and investing is savings challenges. So I budgeted $1,150 to use for savings challenges. We actually took out $1,200 for savings challenges because we had a little bit of extra income. So that was $50 more than I was expecting to have. But again, it was because we had extra income. So I had a little bit of extra money to play with. For my retirement, I budgeted $125 and that is exactly what I sent. So that was no difference there. So in total for savings and investing, we budgeted $1,275 and we actually sent $1,325. So that was $50 more. That should have populated itself. I guess my formula is messed up here. Um, that was $50 more than we were expecting to have for savings and investing. So that is a good overage because we want to send extra to savings and investing when we can. So next we have our debt payoff portion of the budget. So my husband has five student loans, but because the student loan payments are in a pause in the US, I don't budget to send anything to any of his student loans except for this second one here. So on his second student loan, I budgeted $1,250 and we actually ended up sending $1,520. So part of this extra money came from my YouTube check, um, from my giveaway from Deborah, and then I used a little bit of the extra money that we got from Mark's income to put towards debt payoff as well. So we try to put as much of the extra income as we can towards debt, debt payoff. So again, thank you guys for the YouTube check and thank you to Deborah for the extra giveaway money because that all went to debt payoff. So we were able to put $270 more to debt than we were expecting to. So again, this is a good overage when we can send more money than we were expecting to debt. So we're really happy about that. So the total numbers here are just the same as this because we're only paying one debt right now. So next is our bills and fixed expenses. So our first bill that we have is our mortgage. So that was $2,349 that we budgeted and that is actually what we sent. So there was no difference there. 
For our phones, we budgeted $169. It was actually $184 because we did go over on our data. And it makes me so mad every time we go over on our data, it's like the day before or like two days before the billing cycle ends. It's never like, you know, mid month. It's always very close to the end. And I'm like, why can't they just give us a break? But I mean, I get it. Like, that's not how it works. But it's just annoying that it always happens like the day before the billing cycle ends. So uh, we got charged $15 for a little bit of overage. For our internet, we budgeted 81, that's what it was, so there's no difference there. Trash, we budgeted 50, and that's what it was, so no difference there. For life insurance, we budgeted 88, and that is what we were charged, so there was no difference there. And life insurance is not a monthly thing that we pay, we pay it every six months. So I don't really have a sinking fund for it or save up for it since it's not a huge amount, I just take it out of the budget when I know the bill is going to come out. For streaming, we budgeted 108, and that is what we spent, so there was no difference there. So in total for all of our bills and fixed expenses, we budgeted $2,845. We actually paid $2,860 because of that phone bill and we were $15 over. So that wasn't a good overage like the savings and investing and the debt payoff, but um, it wasn't too big of a deal. We were able to cover it with the extra income. So, all right, moving on to our envelopes. So these are digital envelopes because I'm a digital budgeter. I don't actually use cash for anything but savings challenges. So I use this spreadsheet to keep track of how much money I have in my digital envelopes. And these are just like kind of like sinking funds or different categories that I'm spending out of each month. So I use this spreadsheet to keep track of how much money I have left in each category for the month. And then I know how much will roll over into the next month. So our first envelope that we have is school. So we started with $9,029. We budgeted to add 1,000. That's actually what I added and we spent $1,338. So that was quite a lot, but we bought a bunch of curriculum this month. So um, this was all planned spending. So we still have $8,691 left and we will be paying tuition in July. So um, at the end of next month, there probably won't be hardly anything left in this fund. So I'm not excited about that, but I am prepared for it. For our food and household budget, we started with nothing. I budgeted $1,300. We actually had to add in $1,307 because we went $7 over. So we spent $1,307 and now we have zero again. For eating out, we started with $8. I budgeted $250. I added $250. We actually spent $250, so we ended with $8. And if you saw my week four um, budget check-in, I had a little bit extra. I think it was $23 left here. But on the 29th, my sister came over, we went to the pool and we went to Costco and got some pizza. So that was about $15 for pizza and drinks and stuff. So um, we just wanted to be able to take her to lunch and Costco was like a cheap option to do that. So that took um, like $15. So we ended with eight again. For car insurance and maintenance, we started with 650. We budgeted to add 100. That's actually what we added. And we spent 129 on Mark's oil change and now we have 621 left for uh, rollover into July. For car gas, we started with $15. We budgeted 225. I added 225 and we spent 159. So we still have $81 left in car gas. For house bills, we started with six or 363. We budgeted to add 400. I added 400 and we spent 426. So we still have $337 left to roll over into July. For my boys spending, we started with $5. I budgeted $325, that's what we added. We spent $321, so we have $9 left to roll over into July. For Mark's spending, he started with $86. He, we budgeted $200, he got $200, and he spent $252, so he has $34 left. For my spending, I started with $313. We budgeted $250, I added $250, and I spent $528, which I know that's a lot, but I had a hair appointment this month, and I had a big giveaway on my channel and I take away giveaways from my personal spending money. So it was a big month for my spending, but again, it was all planned stuff and I was able to cover it, so it's okay. So I still have $35 left to roll over into July, so I'm happy about that. For holiday and gift, we started with nothing. I budgeted to add 400. I actually had to add a little bit extra, so I added 425 since we had some extra income because we spent 402. So we would have been $2 over budget, but because I added in extra money, we still have $23 left. For pet things, we started with 241, we added, or we budgeted 300, we added 325, and we spent 539, so we still have $27 left there. For house things, we started with 169, I budgeted 100, I actually added 217 
because we did spend quite a lot in our house things budget. I didn't want it to be at zero. So I did use some of the extra income that we had to add extra money into this fund because you guys know I'm trying to save up for a dishwasher and I used a lot of the dishwasher money to buy flowers for our outside front yard flower bed. So I was feeling a little guilty about that. So I used some of this money to add back in to that fund. So we did spend 272 out of it, but now we still have 114 left because I added extra money in. For dues and subscriptions, we budgeted 25, added 25, and we spent 13. So we still have 148 left. For family, we started with 136 as well. We budgeted 100. I added 1,100 because as you guys know, I finished my vacation 1K savings challenge. And I'm not gonna do vacation like as a separate envelope just because I get a little overwhelmed if I have too many envelopes going on. And as you guys have seen on this budget, I already have a lot of envelopes. So I'm just putting our vacation money into our family fund. And once it comes time to pay for vacation, it will just come back out of our family fund because our family fund is kind of used for fun things that we do together as a family anyway. I mean, it could be used for other things as well, but for the most part, we use it for um, activities that we do together. So vacation would qualify as an activity that we do together. So that's why I just put it into our family fund. So that's why you see such a large amount added in here. So we only spent $32 out of our family fund this month and we still have $1,204 left to roll over into July. Next is taxes. So we started with $75. I didn't budget anything because I only put money into taxes if I have a YouTube check and I didn't know if I would or not. But because I did get a YouTube check, I added $25 into this and we didn't spend anything. So we have $100 in our tax fund right now. Next is a new envelope that I just added. So it's health and dental and I didn't have anything in this fund because um, it's brand new. I didn't budget anything for it because I added it just recently and we added $570. And this again is from a savings challenge that I finished. So I was doing a whole savings challenge for braces for my boys. It's like a year, the challenge goes on for a year, but we were at the six month mark. So I went ahead and took out the first half of that challenge's money, which was $570. So I added it into this fund for health and dental. So it, that money is supposed to be for braces for my boys, but I wanted to start a health and dental fund because I want to add in money to this every month. So that's why I went ahead and added it into the budget. So hopefully going forward, I can add a little bit of money into this so that we can be prepared for any like dental or health expenses that might come up because we do have a high deductible um, health insurance plan. So I don't have really any money saved for anything that would come up outside of our HSA anyway. And I don't wanna use the HSA any more than I absolutely have to. So um, we're hopefully gonna start adding more money into this fund. So we have 570 right now, which is all for braces. For miscellaneous, we started with $4. We budgeted to add 55. We added 55 and we spent 48. So we still have $11 left in miscellaneous. So in total for all of our envelopes, we started with $11,230. We budgeted to add $5,030. We actually added $6,799 and we spent $6,016. And we still have $12,013 left. So I'm always happy when this ending amount is greater than our starting amount, because that means we didn't spend as much as we put into our envelopes. Now, next month of July, because we're paying tuition for school, we will definitely end the month with less money than we started with. But that's okay because we are using this money or setting aside this money to be spent. So it's fun to see it grow, but if we have to spend it, that is what we are saving it for. So it's not a big deal. So in total for our actual income, we brought in $12,504 and we actually spent $12,504 as well. So we obviously didn't spend all of that money, but we assigned it a job. So even if it's just sitting in our bank account in one of these envelopes waiting to be used for later, we still assigned it a job. So it's not just sitting there and I think that I can just spend it frivolously on just whatever I want. So I like to make sure I have a job assigned for each dollar that comes in. So that leaves us with a zero balance. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think June was a really good month. We did have a little bit of overages in our spending, but it wasn't anything um, too big that we couldn't cover with our extra income. So I'm really happy overall with how June went and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.